Hello science fans! Last February 28, 2023, empty Princess Empress, an oil tanker carrying 900,000 liters of industrial fuel, sank off the coast of Nauhan Oriental Mindoro, Philippines. This caused a massive oil spill that started in the Tablas Strait and has affected the provinces of Antique, Batangas, Oriental Mindoro, and Palawan. This spill happened in the worst place possible, although it can be argued that any place in the ocean can be considered as the worst place for an oil spill. But anyway, the Tablas Strait is a waterway between the islands of Tablas, Mindoro, Marinduque, and Panay. This strait and the nearby bodies of water, especially the Verde Island Passage, is considered some of the most biodiverse areas in the world. And so far, at least 21 marine protected areas are at risk because of this oil spill. And the residents of the coastal communities along the affected areas have also lost their primary sources of income from fishing and other marine activities for the foreseeable future. But why are oil spills so dangerous? What negative effects do they have on the environment, on human health, and the economy? But before we answer that question using science, hello to our new viewers. My name is Chona and I'm your resident Filipina scientist. I'm a researcher who uses science to figure out gentler ways to live with nature. I'm also a teacher with the De La Salle University and I love talking about principles of sustainability across all the subjects I teach. And Shiensha is my science communication channel where I talk about the science behind both the good and bad events we see in real life. So, let's talk about oil spills. The world has suffered through some horrible oil spills in the past century. One of the recent big ones is the Deepwater Horizon oil spill of 2010. This oil spill occurred in the Gulf of Mexico and is considered one of the worst environmental disasters in U.S. history. It started on April 20, 2010 after an explosion on the Deepwater Horizon oil rig and continued for 87 days until it was capped off on July 15, 2010. The spill released an estimated 210 million gallons of oil into the ocean, impacting wildlife, fishing, and tourism industries and coastal communities. The early 90s, on the other hand, brought us the Gulf War oil spill of 1991. During the Gulf War, Iraqi forces deliberately released oil into the Persian Gulf from several oil tankers, creating one of the largest oil spills in history. The spill released an estimated 240 to 460 million gallons of oil into the ocean, impacting marine life, fisheries, and desalination plants in neighboring countries. Then there's also the Exxon Valdez oil spill of 1989. This oil spill happened in Prince William Sound, Alaska, when the Exxon Valdez oil tanker ran aground on March 24, 1989. The spill released an estimated 11 million gallons of crude oil into the ocean, causing extensive damage to the local environment and economy. The cleanup effort took several years and cost billions of dollars. 1979 was a tragic year in oil spills, which brought us the Ixtok-1 oil spill and the Atlantic Empress Aegean Captain oil spill. The Ixtok-1 oil spill happened in the Gulf of Mexico when an oil well owned by the Mexican oil company Pemex exploded on June 3, 1979. The spill continued for almost 10 months, releasing an estimated 140 million gallons of oil into the ocean. And the Atlantic Empress Aegean Captain oil spill happened in the Caribbean Sea when two oil tankers collided on July 19, 1979. The spill released an estimated 90 to 100 million gallons of oil into the ocean, causing extensive damage to marine life, fishing industries, and tourism in the region. Just imagining all that environmental damage makes me sick. But let's look more closely at the dangers of oil spills. Oil spills can harm marine and terrestrial wildlife by coating their fur or feathers, interfering with their ability to regulate body temperature, and blocking their ability to breathe or feed. 
The oil can also poison the animals if they ingest it. Oil spills can also damage or destroy habitats, such as coral reefs, wetlands, or beaches, with their presence which can lead to the loss of biodiversity and harm to the ecosystem. Oil can also interfere with the ability of plants and microorganisms to photosynthesize and metabolize biomolecules for their food and for their energy. And if they die, this can compromise the whole ecosystem because they form its base from which other organisms feed and survive off of. Oil spills can cause significant water pollution. Since the oil can also eventually dissolve in water, this can form toxic compounds that can harm marine life and also contaminate drinking sources. And exposure to oil and its toxic components can pose serious health risks to humans and animals, including skin irritation, respiratory problems, and even cancer. Oil spills obviously can have significant economic impacts too. The contaminated water can harm the fishing and tourism industries as well as disrupt shipping and transportation routes. So, we'll see a significant loss of income for fishermen, a significant drop in tourism, and there's the cleanup costs too. Oil spill cleanup can be tedious and expensive. But what can be done after an oil spill happens? The primary goal of oil spill cleanup should be containment and recovery. This is usually done by the deployment of booms, barriers, and other containment devices to prevent the spread from happening and make recovery faster. Skimming boats and vacuum trucks can also be used to collect oil from the surface of the water. For contaminated ecosystems, dispersants have also been used to break down the oil into smaller pieces, making it easier for microorganisms and other natural processes to break down the oil faster. But while they can be effective in reducing the immediate impact of an oil spill, the use of chemical oil dispersants can also have negative effects on the environment. For example, chemical oil dispersants can be toxic to marine life, including fish, shellfish, and other organisms. The dispersants can cause respiratory problems, damage to organs, and other health effects. Chemical oil dispersants can also accumulate in the tissue of marine life, which increases the amount of toxic substances in the food chain. These chemicals can also interfere with natural processes for breaking down oil, such as microbial degradation, and may lead to the formation of toxic compounds. And the dispersants, if not used properly, can also cause the oil to disperse into a wider area, making it more difficult to contain and recover and also exposes more marine life to the toxic chemicals in the oil. Now, of course, there are natural processes, such as bioremediation, that can be used to break down the oil and its components. This involves the introduction of bacteria or other microorganisms that can consume the oil and transform it into less harmful substances. This has been used successfully to clean up small to medium-sized oil spills such as those that occur at industrial facilities or during transportation. However, it is largely not considered a practical option for large-scale oil spills in open water, such as those from oil tanker accidents or offshore drilling accidents. The size and volume of a large-scale oil spill can be too large for bioremediation techniques to be effective. The amount of microorganisms to treat a spill of this size is enormous and may not be feasible to obtain. Bioremediation also requires specific environmental conditions to be effective, such as warm temperatures, sufficient oxygen levels, and nutrient-rich waters. These conditions may not exist in the open ocean, especially in deep waters. Bioremediation also takes time, sometimes weeks or months, to be effective. And in the case of a large-scale oil spill, it is important to act quickly to prevent its spread and prevent further damage. And please note that introducing large amounts of microorganisms into the ocean could have unintended consequences, including harm to marine life or the formation of harmful algal blooms. 
oil spills present a very bleak scenario and sometimes we just want to go out there and help. But what should volunteers be aware of before they suit up and dive in the water? Well, oil and its components are toxic and can be harmful to human health. Remember, exposure to an oil spill can cause cancer. And so, volunteers should have adequate protective equipment, such as gloves, boots, masks, and should be trained properly on how to handle and dispose of oil-contaminated materials. And beyond physical health, you also have to prepare your mental health. Witnessing the impact of oil spills and participating in cleanup efforts can be emotionally stressful, especially when you start seeing the people and the organisms that are immediately impacted by the oil spill. Volunteers should be prepared for these emotional challenges and should have access to counseling and other support services if needed. Cleaning up oil spills can be physically demanding work, including very long hours, a lot of heavy lifting, and exposure to harsh weather conditions. Volunteers should be prepared for these conditions and should only undertake tasks that they are physically capable of performing. Uncoordinated cleanup efforts can be dangerous and may cause further damage to the environment. And at the end of the day, volunteers should be aware that, especially for larger oil spills, their efforts can have very minimal effects. The effectiveness of cleanup efforts depends on many factors, including the type of oil, the location of the spill, and the weather conditions. And so, preventing oil spills is still the most effective way of preventing the negative impacts of oil spills. This can involve implementing stricter regulations and safety measures, such as regular inspections and maintenance of oil pipelines and shipping vessels and having effective spill response plans in place. But you know what would even be better? If we stop our reliance on oil as our primary source of energy. So if we want to help in the long run, let's continue to advocate for green energy and for those with the resources to do so, to switch to green energy now. Let's minimize the use of gas-powered vehicles, and let's ask our representatives to prioritize efficient mass transport systems. We panic over oil spills, but the combustion of oil poisons our air every single day. So, we shouldn't wait for catastrophes like the Mindoro oil spill of 2023 before we act. But what do you think? Can our society really transition away from fossil fuels as our primary source of energy? What will happen to us once they finally run out? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. <laughs>